Happy Sunday, Living Word. We're going to start off with a little bit of worship. Amen. We cannot run from your presence. We cannot flee from you. Even if I hide on the highest mountain, you are there. Where can I run from your presence? Where can I flee from you? Even if I Deepest valley, you will find me there. Deeper than any ocean, your love goes on and on and on and on.
morning and welcome to our Living Word Home Church service. I hope you're doing well. I'm Pastor Benny. And if you're joining us for the first time, thank you for being a part of this time as we learn and grow in God's Word together. Amen. Well, folks, God is good. We have been in a series called Righteous Living based on the book of Ruth. If you uh, haven't been following us, you can catch us up on YouTube or on our Living Word uh, NYC website. Well, today's theme, What Comes Next? But before we get started, let's just bow our heads and enter the Lord's presence. Father, we thank you for your word, which you promised will not be returned void. We ask you to search our heart, mind, soul, and spirit, and empower us with your divine wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. We thank you for your victory this day. In Jesus' name, and all the saints said, amen and amen. Well, folks, that's right. Righteous living based on the book of Ruth. And last week, well, Lauren's theme was, what is this? Today... Steam is what comes next. How about we start off the message with an ouch moment? That's right. Here it is. The decisions you make today will determine the stories you tell tomorrow. That's right. I'm going to say it again. The decisions you make today will determine the story you tell tomorrow. Let me ask you, how much, how many of you are happy with the season that you're in? Would you say it can be better? Do you want something different? And do you know what that something that has to change is? You know, we can change, we can't change what we have already done, but we can change what we choose to do next. Remember, if you don't change what we've been doing, we're going to get much of the same, right? That's the fact. You remember what I said a few weeks ago? Uh, same circus, different clowns. That's all, that, that's all we're going to get. We can choose what comes next, folks. That's right. We can choose what the next chapter of our life is going to be. So what comes next can be what we plan and pray for. We can start, I mean, when we think about it, when we started the book of Ruth and in the first chapter, we read and saw certain Again, certain choices that were being made. We can consider those choices, again, questionable. Like so many of the choices we make in life, right? You know, with friends, relationships, jobs, finances, etc. We might, it might have seemed like a good idea in the moment. Only to find that it, was a, it wasn't a God idea. And in the process, causing serious turns of events... Problems that turn into what they, we consider called generational cur curses. That's right, generational junk. I want us to keep in mind that the first chapter isn't the end of the story. The second chapter isn't the end of the story either. I want you to turn to someone. If you not have anyone there, look in the mirror and let's turn to them and say, it, where you are today isn't the end of the story. That's right. Make sure they hear it. Our theme today isn't about Heartbreak Ridge. It isn't about how when Harry met Sally. It isn't about overcoming insecurities, my personal sacrifice. No, it's what comes next, folks. Choosing and preparing for the next chapter, one prayer at a time, based on righteous living. Remember the decisions we make will Determine the story we tell tomorrow. So consider what we are planning and praying for. Those decisions we make can become our testimonies tomorrow. Maybe you're dealing with, again, heartbreak, loss, doubts about the future, doubts about God. Whatever it is, folks, God can make a way. Doesn't matter what it is. In life, we can't, we can't succeed without failure. So don't get discouraged and don't settle for the current chapter. Read the full story, as Lauren said previously. Only four chapters. Read it. In, instead of settling and getting comfortable with dysfunction and the culture, let's prepare for what will come next. So what did we get from the previous chapters? Think about what's happening. What happened? And what we have to look forward to. 
Don't ignore or avoid the past. We can learn and grow from that. So according, imagine this, according to the law back during the time of Ruth and Boaz, uh, as Elder King and uh, Lauren uh, briefly mentioned in prior messages, you know, when a woman, uh, a widow, uh, when a woman is a widowed, is widowed, in order to secure a family lineage, she was to marry the next line, the next in line, you know, the next of kin, a brother, a relative. That way they could, you know, they have children uh, to secure, so she can secure the family name. Again, and in that culture, that was, again, the righteous and the right way of doing things. It was reasonable to secure the family name. I mean, I'm sure that some cultures probably still do that. So in earlier chapters, here's Ruth. You know, she finds this guy, Boaz, and Boaz finds Ruth. They fit perfectly. You know, some people would look at this as, you know, what they would say, a love at first sight. But this isn't love at first sight. They were fit perfectly in every way, but, and here's that but, there's one problem. As soon as you hear that word, but, you're probably saying it was too good to be true. Right? But the but is that Boaz wasn't the next in line to marry Ruth. So now what? How does this chapter start? It starts with an opportunity. That's right. It turns out to be the opportunity needed to ch in the chapter to start a new one. To start a new chapter but one that will honor God. Boaz needed three things, the same three things we all need. Providence, planning, and prayer. That's right, providence of God, folks. No parting of the Red Sea, no physical miracles, only when God uses natural circumstances to bring about supernatural, His supernatural will. We so often call this coincidence, or, or chance, or unexpected circumstances. But it's a divine appointment. We can easily confuse providence of God with elations of a moment. Even an act of desperation can seem like, uh, again, like a leading. Especially when we are looking for something or someone to fill our void. Our hurts, our loneliness, our fears. And anxiety, it can mas mask itself as Something else. Easily. Folks, God is in the details as well as anything else. He's in the little things. He's in the big things. He, he cares about everything. I can't begin to tell you how often God's providence provides the very thing we need at the right time. I'm talking about a, a, he's the God of the last minute. You've heard of that, right? And in the nick of time. When we least expect it, God's always on time. He's never late. I'm not talking about accidents either. Although God can turn those things around and work it for good as well. Think about what we're saying here. I want you to turn your Bible to the book of Ruth, chapter 4, verse 1. And I'm going to be using the NLT today. Boaz went to the town gate. And he took a seat there. Just then the family redeemer he had mentioned came by. So Boaz called out to him, Come over here and sit down, friend. I want to talk to you. So they sat down together. Now here, here's where God's timing and planning uh, favors us. Boaz, he, was, he waited for this family redeemer and the one who was next in line. And he waited for him at the town gate, which is where people consider, and we can consider this a, a courthouse or city hall, wherever city council meetings are held, right? And it's a popular place where, you know, again, people gather and negotiate deals. Now, the scripture doesn't give the next of kin's name, only refers to him as a friend and as a family redeemer. But God is using here providence. You know, everyday natural circumstances to provide uh, the divine appointment, his will. And the second thing was 
strategic planning on Boaz's part. Folks, having a plan plays a big part. That's right. Having a plan helps us. It's a blessing to be prepared. Now, now listen to Boaz's strategy. That's right. Boaz has a strategy. And book, turn to the book of Ruth, chapter 4, 3, 4, the NLT version. Now, and Boaz says to the family redeemer, you know Naomi, who, who came back from Moab. You know, she's selling the land that belongs to our, to our relative Elimelech. And I thought that I should speak to you about it so that you can redeem it if you wish. If you want the land, uh, then buy it here in the presence of witnesses. But if you don't wait, want it, this is what he says, I, I, I want to let you know that I, I'm, I, I'm willing, he's saying, right? But if you don't want it, let me know right away because I am the next in line to redeem it after you. The man replied, all right, I will, I will redeem it. You think that Boaz doesn't know what he's doing, right? But it, it may seem that way. You notice he doesn't mention Ruth, but he's got a plan. He's also had a witnesses present, which, is, which I like to call accountability. Folks, Boaz goes prepared. He has witnesses present. He has uh, uh, prepared to negotiate. And then he says, oh yeah, uh, one more thing. I'll turn to the book of Ruth. Chapter 4, verse 5, the NLT version. Then Boaz told him, uh, of course, uh, your purchase of the land from Naomi also requires that you marry Ruth, the Moabite woman. That way, she can have children who will carry her husband's name and keep the land in the family. Right? Boaz says, pump, pump, pump the brakes, dude. First thing first, the land comes with a couple of widows, and just to add a little more to the you know, to impact the situation, he says, uh, and one is a Moabite, right? Yeah, uh, the child that you're going to be carrying, she'll be carrying, uh, won't be carrying your name. You know, he says, what? You know, he won't be carrying my name. He realizes that they are both, again, Ruth and Naomi, broke. You know, they had to, he had to provide for both, both of them if he wants to buy the land. He saw all this as a bad investment. So folks, sometimes folks, we don't know the difference between a bad investment and a God or a good investment, a godly investment. We can be so caught up in the moment we lose sight of because we are unwilling to wait and trust in God. And no judgment here. I want you to turn to the book of Ruth, chapter 4, verse 6, the NLT version. He says, don't you know, I mean, I'm sorry, let me just get it. Ruth 4, 6, NLT. Then I, can redeem, then I can't redeem it, the family redeemer replied, because this might endanger my own estate. He said, you redeem the land, I cannot do it. So they struck a deal. And in verse 7, this is how they struck a deal. One took the sandal off and gave it to the other. This is how they legalized things back then. Of course, in front of witnesses. Again, where the family redeemer saw this as a bad investment, Boaz saw it as an opportunity, a legacy investment. See, he saw things differently. When we look for what we can get, rather than what we can bring to the table, we miss out on the blessings. You know, when we, uh, uh, when we bring integrity, when righteous living into the relationship, folks, we're going to see the blessing. We're going to see fruit. When we don't know how to wait and trust God and plan and pray for wisdom, we are leaning on our own understanding. In chapter 1, Naomi's husband, Elimelech, didn't have a plan. Milan, Ruth's husband, didn't have a plan. The family redeemer didn't have a plan. They couldn't see past the moment. 
How can we see, look forward to, again, what's next if we can't see past today, past the moment? Many years ago, I, I counseled a, a couple and they wanted to get married. I mean, I've, I've counseled many couples, but my policy has always been six months of premarital counseling. They, they had a date already scheduled, and I always ask them that, you know, just to make sure. But they already had a date scheduled for the marriage ceremony. The premarital counseling was just a formality. Not a, not a big part of their plan. It wasn't really a plan. It was just something to check off their list. So they, they you know, they, were, they wanted to go with it. They still wanted to sort of, they agreed to see me for, for a period of time as they got closer to the due date which was not enough time. Of course, they weren't ready, uh, but they, they thought they were. In the last session, that week before they got married, before the wedding, I told them of what I saw and what wasn't right and told them that they weren't ready. It wasn't right. And they said, well, you know, one of their parents was already officiating the wedding, uh, who was a minister, and as if that was going to fix, fix everything. As if that was going to make things right. And the night of their honeymoon, everything got ugly. Everything fell, fell apart. They were back in my office the following week. And folks, let me tell you, I've had other similar cases where I had said the same thing. They weren't ready in not even a week. They were back in my office. Bad investments, folks. Sometimes we make bad investments because of how we feel. I want you to turn to the book of Proverbs, chapter 21, verse 5, the NLT version. Good planning and hard work leads to prosperity, but hasty shortcuts lead to poverty. And here's an ouch moment. One of the most spiritual things we can do is make a plan. Simple as that. And don't forget about accountability. We need accountability. So what's your plan? for choosing your next chapter? Is it investing in a plan? Remember, the decisions we make today determines the story you tell tomorrow. You wanna know how? Well, let's plan, let's pray, let's hold ourselves accountable, let's, let's, let's seek the Lord. Everyone fails and makes mistakes, but then what? Do we get back up making the same old choices again? You know, are you struggling financially with health, marriage, relationship? Maybe you're far from God. Maybe you, you know, so you want the plan, but you don't know how. So what's the plan? Boaz had a plan to buy the land and become the next kin's redeemer so that he can marry Ruth. You know, he was 40. When he married Ruth. I want you to turn your Bibles to the book of Ruth, chapter 4, verse 10, the NLT version. And with the land I have acquired Ruth, the Moabite widow of Milan, to be my wife. This way she can have a son to carry on the family name of her dead husband to inherit the family property. He is here in his hometown. You all witness, you are all witness today. He was an honorable man, a man of honor, of integrity. He loved Ruth and he saw beyond all the, the moment. He was looking far beyond that moment. He had the right heart attitude. So the final chapter of Boaz's plan was to join Ruth's plan to honor God's plan. That's the equation, folks. They not only depended on the providence of God. We needed to we we need to start planning the next chapter.
How do we do that? Well, faith-filled prayers. That's how. Short prayers, long prayers. You know, as we long as we pray, let's pray all together, folks. Let's pray individual prayer. Let's, let's do it all. All throughout the chapters, there was prayer. From chapter 1 of the book of Ruth, 1-9, 1-17, 2-4, 2-12, 2-13, it was 3, 10. It takes a village. Takes a village to pray. Ruth, chapter 4, 11, NLT. All the people at the gate and the elders said, we are witnesses. May the Lord make the woman who is coming into your house like Rachel and Leah, the two who built the household of Israel. May you achieve wealth and power in Ephrathah and become famous in Bethlehem. Ephrathah is the Hebrew name for fruitful. Listen to the prayer of the village, of the, of the witnesses, of the folks. May the Lord make this woman, Ruth, a Moabite woman who turned to the one true God, like the woman who, whom the nation of Israel descended. That's right. This woman who put her trust in God, her eyes were on serving the Lord. He said, and then they say, may you prosper, be famous in Bethlehem. Folks, Jesus himself had a plan and he prayed to fulfill God's will. He prayed for us. We are part of his plan. I want you to turn to 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 9, the NLT version. For he delivered us and saved us and called us with a holy calling. A calling that leads to a consecrated life. A life set apart. A life of purpose, not because of our works or because of any per personal merit. We could do nothing to earn this. But because of his own purpose and grace, his amazing undeserved favor, which was granted us in Christ Jesus before the world began. This was God's plan. Boy, he's been praying for us. Think about it. Boaz was the father of Obed, right? Now, I want you to turn to the Bible because you can know who Mo Obed is. In Matthew chapter 1, verse 5, the Amplified Version, and here Solomon was the father of Boaz by Rahab. That's right. Boaz was the father of Obed by Ruth and Obed the father of Jesse. I mean, I'm going to read the chapter again because I want us to, I want to break it down because it says that Solomon was the father of Boaz by Rahab, the prostitute, the Canaanite woman from Jericho. And you want to find that story in the book of Joshua chapter 2. So you know where they come from. Ruth was a Moabite and Boaz comes from, again, also from the descendants of, you know, others here that we would were, we were consider questionable. What God can do, no matter where we come from, no matter where we've been, no matter what we've done, where you've been or what choices, we can, God can choose those who turn to Him. Like Rahab the prostitute married uh, uh, Solomon from Judah. She was a, she was a Gentile. So Ruth was a Moabite. And here we get the lineage of Jesus when we turn our lives to Him, when we can put our trust in Him. Folks, it's time to start thinking about what comes next, planning and praying about our next chapter in life. Don't hold back. God would hear our prayers. You know, we're coming into the season where... Easter Sunday, we, weeks prior to that, we start our fasting. We come to dedicate ourselves into, you know, looking forward to the next chapter in our life. I want you to join us as we look to, 
to for forward to entering that season of prayer and fasting. Join us. You'll catch us up on the next messages. You'll catch us up on a line of what we're going to be fasting and praying for. So we're going to be very specific. We start one day of cutting one thing and then we go work ourselves to another thing as we start learning what it means to, you know, give, give away, give in of the flesh and under, getting into that place with the Lord. Amen. But as you know, and if you're here and you're struggling, we want to be able to pray with you. We want you to join right now as we bow our heads for those that are in this place and want to see what the next chapter in their life is going to be. Let's bow our heads right now and pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, that you have always had a plan and a purpose for our life. We thank you for the work you started in us, Lord. We know that because you started this work in us, you're going to finish it. So we pray, Lord, for that healing, that deliverance. We pray for that vision to be able to see beyond the moment. To be able to have that legacy vision, Lord, for prosperity. The Lord, so we can actually be a light of the world. So we thank you for the victory we have in you, Lord. Help us to honor you in spirit and in truth, Lord. We thank you for this victory this day in Jesus' name. And all the saints said, amen and amen. Well, join us in our Q&A following this message. Right following this message, you can find, click into our uh, livingword.nyc website. And you'll go, you'll go right, add you right into our chat room, and we can actually have this Q&A discussion. If not, you can go follow on YouTube. You can also get the information there. And remember, following the message, we also have our new membership class. And prepare for the following weeks that we're going to enter our Holy Week, and we look forward to seeing you uh, and joining our services. Amen? Well, God bless you, and remember, God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. Take care.